In this video we're going to look at taking the vector textures that were created in the drawing tutorial and how to use those in order to create texture panels with varying depth toolpaths. In this case we're going to use the texture toolpath and the ability to tell that to follow a specific set of vectors and then to provide a range of depths that it's going to randomize through in order to give you the sort of effect you can see on the screen here. So let's start a copy of the software Let's come over and click on the icon to open an existing file. From the project folder we'll select vector texture underscore vector and hit open. Here we can see all the vectors that were created in the drawing tutorial associated with this example. If we take a quick look at the layers, there's a drop down list here, we can see the first layer has what's called the cutout vector on it, that's the rectangle you can see on the screen. Then we have a layer called wave that has that pattern on it there. Then we have a layer called step with this pattern, one called swirl and one called grain. And we're going to work through some of these when we calculate our new toolpaths in this example. Let's just switch off the grain layer there, switch back on the wave layer and close the layer manager. We're ready now to go over to the toolpath tab. So let's click on the icon to minimize the design tab, open the toolpath tab on the right. Let's go ahead at this stage and just hit F on the keyboard in order to fit the 2D view into the main window there. As with all machining operations we should click on set to check our material setup first. So here we've got material thickness 3 quarters of an inch, Z0 off the top of the block, XY datum in the lower left. Model position in the material uh, is irrelevant at the moment but that's pushed all the way to the top there and we'll just adjust the home start position a little but I'm happy with those parameters. Now if you plan to actually cut any of the toolpaths that we're going to create in this tutorial then it's important that you calculate them with appropriate values that are safe for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available and the material that you're planning to use. Let's go ahead and just hit OK now. In the 2D toolpath video associated with this vector texture example, we use the profile toolpath in order to just drive a tool along these vectors at a constant depth. Now what I want to show you in this video first is how we can use the texture toolpath in order to vary that depth as we drive it along the different lines. So we want to select our vector pattern and to come up and click on the icon for the texturing toolpath. I'm going to select the appropriate tool for this. So in this case what I want to use is a half inch ball nose tool so I'm going to choose that from the tool database here. If you don't have that you may need to go ahead and add that there to your list. Just hit apply and OK so that becomes the selected tool. Next I'm going to set the start depth to be zero and in order to use this vector pattern that we've got here then I need to check the box that we can see there. So that's just going to ensure that we drive the tool along each of these vectors. How this differs to the profile toolpath though is that I can specify a maximum depth of cut, so in this case I'll put a max depth of cut of 0.1 but then what I can do is come in and vary that. So when you use the profile toolpath all these vectors will be cut at a depth of 0.1 but here what I can say is that I can vary that so that some of them may be cut as shallow as 0.005 of an inch and then others may be cut using values in between. This will just be randomized by the toolpath. So let's go ahead and call this wave texture 05BN for 05 ball nose or half inch ball nose. Hit calculate and the software will automatically put us into our 3D view here. I'm just going to change the preview material and we'll just go to cherry there. Just put that into an ISO view. And if we just look at the toolpaths for a moment here, if we maybe view down the x-axis and zoom in, you can see that they are at different depths. And that will become more apparent if we go ahead and preview the selected toolpaths there. So it's not overly obvious, but you can see kind of different widths creeping in here. And that's really down to the fact that some of these are being cut deeper than others. Now what you may find, depending on the variance you put in there, is you could end up with some flat spots, as I've got here. 
To avoid that, we can actually use a bit of a start depth in order to kind of force the tool down into the material before it starts respecting the other depths we've used. To do that, I can just close the preview there, double click on the toolpath, and maybe we'd specify a start depth here of 0.05. Maybe we'll increase the maximum cut depth a little to create even more variation there and recalculate the toolpath. Let's just reset the preview now and preview that again and now we'll see the result that that's going to give us. So again it's just randomizing the depths as it goes along there based on the parameters that I've entered and that just gives us a bit more variation in the finished result that we're going to get when we run that toolpath with that tool. Okay so let's reset the preview there and just close the preview toolpath form and I'm going to select a different one of the textures now so that we can take a look at that. So let's hit Control L on the keyboard to open the layer manager and just click on the 2D view here. I'm going to undraw the wave layer. I'm going to switch on the swirl layer. Let's go ahead and hit F12 so we go back to just having the toolpaths tab open and close the design tab again. And this time I'm going to create the same toolpath so we'll just click on that, select the new vector pattern that we're using here and we'll just take exactly the same parameters but I do need to make sure that I check use selected vectors as pattern otherwise I'll just get a standard texture toolpath and it will ignore those vectors. So we'll call this one swirl texture 05BN again and hit calculate. So again this is just going to randomize the depths. Also here when we created this vector texture we randomized the spacing. So once more we should get an even more organic looking effect when we run this toolpath in here. And if we want to reduce any of these effects we can just go ahead and make the um, envelope of depths within the texture toolpath there more narrow. So you can see this creates quite an interesting effect. Now this wouldn't make a repeating panel, but if you did want to do that, then you'd just need to make a vector texture, which was the size of the overall job that you want, made up of multiple panels, and then create your toolpath and use the toolpath tiling in order to divide that up into pieces that were the appropriate size for each panel of your material. Let's go ahead and reset the preview there, close that, come back over, we'll click on the layers tab here, I'm just going to undraw the swirl layer, draw and select the grain layer. Then I'm going to click back into the 2D view and you can see this is quite a different type of vector texture that we've created here and this is to try and emulate a wood grain. Now I'm going to do the same sort of toolpath with this so we'll select the vector, click on the texture toolpath but this time I need to use a smaller tool in order to get the effect I'm looking for. So I'm going to select a quarter inch ball nose in this case I'm going to set the start depth to be zero because I should get plenty of overlap with this tool. I'm going to use the selected vectors as a pattern again and I'm going to set the cut depth to be 0.1 and to start with I'm going to push the variance so that we get no variance at all. So this will effectively emulate what we were doing before when we were cutting this with the profile toolpath. So let's take a look at that first of all here. Just put in the name and hit calculate so if we preview that we can see the effect that we're getting there and that creates quite a nice sort of wood grain effect that we can see. But if we double click on that and now let the software vary the depth again as it works its way through this and recalculate, reset the preview and preview that we should see that it now gets a little more interesting because we're adding some variation in depth which is more organic and will give us the feel of something more like a real natural wood grain. So that's sort of the difference there really that you're seeing is just adding that extra variance in there of being able to um, randomize the depths of the toolpath when it calculates using that at texture option and making sure you select the uh, box there that asks the texture toolpath to use the vectors as the pattern that it's going to follow. So let's come up and click on reset preview and then come down and close the preview toolpath form. And at this point you've seen how we can use this texture toolpath with this variance in depth to create a lot of interesting effects with these vector textures. An additional thing that you could do to take this a stage further would actually be to take any of these 2D or 2.5D toolpaths and project them onto a 3D model. 
to do that you'd need to import a 3D model so that you have a component set that to be an appropriate depth and also use the material setup to position that in the material and then you would just calculate a toolpath and if I double click on one of these I'll just need to check the box here that says project toolpath onto 3D model and again that's just giving you another option of how you might affect the shape that you're going to get with these vector texture toolpaths. The last thing we do to finish off any of our texture panels is to cut out the actual rectangle to our panel size. If you remember we deliberately created these vector textures so that they're bigger than the panel size and that way the tool is going to plunge down off the material then the texture will be cut through the material and out the other side before it retracts and that will give us a much better finish edge when we come to cut this out. So let's click to go over to the drawing tab again and pop that out go into the 2D view and I'm just going to use the layer drop down to undraw the grain layer select the cutout vector layer close that and now we can select our rectangle here click on the icon to switch back to the toolpaths tab now if we were to go ahead and just click profile toolpath I'm going to set this Z equals to cut all the way through the material got a quarter inch end mill selected there we can adjust any of the parameters if we want to for this hit OK I'm going to cut outside the rectangle there and we'll just call that toolpath profile cut out and hit calculate and now what I could do is take one of my other um, any of my textures here and preview it and then we could choose the profile cut out there preview that I'm going to cut through I can double click to remove my waste material and there's my 24 inch by 12 inch texture panel that I could now output and cut on the CNC this stage that concludes what I want to show in this video so let's come up save the file file save as and we'll call this vector texture toolpath 2 5d to show it's got two and a half D toolpaths in it and hit save so you have a copy of that now in the project folder so there you've seen again how flexible this tool is where we create these vector textures and some of the different effects we can get depending on the type of toolpath that we use. In the other tutorial we showed you a simple profile toolpath. Here we've taken that a stage further and started to add a variance in depth to that. Of course the finished result is also influenced by the size and shape of the tool you choose and the depth of cut that you pick as well. And that concludes this video.